Hello and welcome back to Growth Step. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at Zapier. So if you don't know what Zapier is, we're going to be covering that. We're going to be going through an example of how you can use Zapier to, um, to automate tasks and send data. And then finally we're going to be using some of Zapier's cool inbuilt features to try and enrich some data. If that all sounds confusing, don't worry, we're going to go through all of it in a sec. So first of all, what is Zapier? So Zapier is a, uh, is a SaaS application that basically lets you automate tasks and send data between different um, applications and different pieces of software. Uh, for example, it, you can send uh, Facebook leads through to Slack. Um, and in our example today, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take a submission of a form, um, which, which we have here. So I've just created a demo form on HubSpot. So this is once we complete this we can use this for our testing um so let's just imagine that this is a someone on our website completing a demo form and we then want to take that information and submit it to slack so every time someone submits the form we get a notification in slack saying hey someone submit submitted this form so then we can take action on it and have a feed of all of our leads there so let's jump right back into zapier so the first thing you're going to notice when you create a Zapier account is that it'll ask you what your favorite apps are and it'll come up with a few different suggestions. Um, but what you want to do is you want to click make a zap. Once you click make a zap, you will basically be asked what the first application you want to connect and use is. And basically that'll be your trigger. And then what do you want that trigger to do? So for today's example, we're using a HubSpot form. So firstly, we're going to connect up our HubSpot account. So we're going to select HubSpot here. Um, we're going to choose the trigger event. So it's going to be a new form submission. And we're going to click continue. So now we need to connect our HubSpot account up. So it's very simple. Sign into HubSpot. Give it the permissions that it needs. Miss that bit. There we go. And now HubSpot is connected up to Zapier. So you only have to do that once. Next time you use HubSpot in the zap, you won't have to connect it again because it's already be saved. So we've connected up HubSpot. We said that we want our trigger to be a submission of a form. We're going to click continue now. And we're actually now because HubSpot's connected, we can choose the form. So I only have one form. I just created this HubSpot, HubSpot account and it's the growth step demo form. Select that, click continue, and we're going to test and continue. So what this is doing now is it's calling HubSpot to make sure that we can actually connect to that form. And as you can see, there's a nice green tick there, which means that we've done that successfully. So now what do we want to do? So we have connected HubSpot. We've said that every time that form submits, we want it to be the trigger. But now where do we want to send that data to? We want to send it to Slack. So we choose our next application, which is Slack. There we go. And we choose an action or event. So you can send a direct message, you can send a channel message, or you can send a reminder. Uh, for today's example, we're going to send a channel message. So that way, if you have a sales team or marketing team or whatever team it might be, they can all see the notifications in the channel. Um, in most cases, I like to have things like form submissions in the in a specific uh, channel. So anyone in the company who would be wanting to see those can add uh, can add themselves to a channel. Anyone who doesn't need to see them doesn't have to see them. So we're going to send a channel message. We're going to click continue. And again, this is the first time we're connecting Slack, so we're going to have to sign into Slack. There we go. It's the growth steps growth step Slack. Again, allow access, and we are good to go. So now we can continue to the next step. So first we're going to have to choose what channel we want to send the message into. So in my Slack account, I've actually just created a channel called Forms here. Um, ooh, seems like everyone's in this channel already, but yeah, we have this channel called Forms. And that's where I want to be sending my notifications every time someone completes the form. So let's go back to Zapier and let's find it forms. There we go. And now we want to uh, put the message text in. So what do we want to say? So we're going to call this uh, new 
form submission. And we can put that in bold. So if you want to put anything in bold, you put it in between the asterisks. And it wouldn't be useful unless we have the data in it. So this is all the data that's available from the form. So you can see that because we connected the first step, it's, oh, there we go. Don't need that. So you can see the notification just came in notifying me that there was an app that's been connected on Slack. Um, so as I was saying, sorry, um, from the first step, you can see all the data that's available here. So we can have uh, the email address, the first name, and the last name. If you click show options, there'll be other options available, but that basically matches what we have in our form, which is here. So email, first name, last name, phone number. So what we can do is we want to, when we broadcast the channel, we want to say new form submission, and we want to give the details. So we can put uh, an asterisk again, because we want this bit to be bold, uh, bold um, name. And then we select uh, first name, add a space, then you can add the last name there. And on the next line, we want their email, so let's put email, let's put it in asterisk again. And we select email, and that's going to auto populate. And is there any other information that we want in there? Uh, not at the moment. Well, we can put the phone number in as well. So let's put in the phone number. Again, asterisk, keep on forgetting to do that. There we go, the phone number is now there as well. So that's the message that's gonna be broadcast uh, to that channel in Slack. There's a few other settings that we wanna play around with. So um, send as bot, yes, that's fine. You can give your bot a name. Um, so let's just call this um, HubSpot, HubSpot bot. Um, bot icon, so I always like to choose an icon. Um, just because I think it makes the um, the, po the notifications of posts on Slack stand out a bit more. So what you can do is in Slack you can choose one of the uh, one of the uh, emojis. So for this, let's just choose a pen. There we go. And if you copy it from Slack, so I'm copying that to my clipboard, and go back and paste the bot icon here. There we go. Now that's what your bot icon will look like. Um, the last thing that we're going to change here is it says include a link to this app. We don't want to include a link because not every, I'm pretty much going to be the only person who's going to be dealing with Zapier on here. So we don't want to include that link there. And all the other settings are fairly standard. You can tinker around and play with them if you want to. Um, but for what we're doing now, we don't really need it. So we're going to click continue now. And we're going to click test and continue. So what this is going to do now is it's actually going to use a sample contact. So HubSpot, so it's going to just take a random sample contact from HubSpot. It's always the same one and it's going to send it to Slack. So if you go over to Slack in our channel, there we go. As we can see now, that's been submitted and that's just sample data. So that's work with the sample data. So what we're going to do now is go back to Zapier and we are we don't need that. Let's give it a name. So, hotspot form to Slack, and let's turn it on. Perfect. So that zap is now on and working. So let's go back and where we can see where we can see this in our dashboard. So let's test it out. So we've we've seen it come through with sample data, but the only way that we'll really know it's working is if we go through the form and fill it out ourselves. So let's add uh, da, 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 and let's add my details in here. Let's put some random phone number and enter a valid email address. That is a valid email address. Let's submit that. Oh, okay. Let's try my other email address. There we go, that's worked. So let's submit that form. That's now submitted. So what we should see when we go over to Slack now is that this form has been submitted. So it should post on Slack saying that there's been a new form submission with all the details. 
and there is. Here we can see that the information I just put in has been posted here. Um, so last thing that I'm going to show you quickly um, before uh, before I let you guys go and explore this yourselves is if we go back to this Zap, um, Zapier actually has some really cool features. So as you can see in this form, um, we're collecting, ooh, let's actually reload the form. Ah, let's go back here. Du, du, du. Share form, share link. Copy. Let's go back there. So in the form, you can see that um, we only have a few fields and we don't have actually, we don't actually have that much information about the company, um, which we can actually um, enrich from Zapier. So they have a cool feature called lead score. So let's add that into our zap and see what information we can then get from that so in the middle here after they've submitted their form we're going to add another step um, so if we search for the zapier tool called lead score there we go and find person and company information that's what we want to do so because we have the email address we can do that so we're going to click continue it's going to say where do we find the email address so we basically have to map the first step email address to the second step so if you just click here and select email that's all you have to do and click continue again we can run a test that's done editing and now we can add even more information to our slack message because what it's, what it's done is it's now going to look up the in company information and enrich it so we can know things like company size, company location, uh, and lots more. So let's see what we can do. Let's go back to customize channel message. And let's see what we have. So we have lots of stuff here. So we have all these different properties so let's add this in for example company location so I'm gonna put this ah, I keep on forgetting the asterisks put this in as location and that's automatically gonna find where that person is where that company is located we can also add in cool things like company size so I'll add that one in We'll save it and then we can see um, we can see it in action so there we go company properties number of employees so let's just put this in as size perfect now we are going to continue and Let's just skip that, say done editing. Make sure you turn your zap on on the top right so every time you edit it, it's going to switch it off. And boom, that's on now again. So if we go back to our form, you can see, oh, where's it gone? There it is. So let me change my email address here to a bigger company. Um, actually, let's go, let's go for Uber. There we go. Um, we'll keep all those details the same. Let's change some of these numbers around. And so as you can see here, I haven't actually entered any details about my company. The only thing I've given is my email address, which is an uber.com. And what that's going to do is it's going to look up uber.com and give us information. So let's submit this form. And if we go over to Slack, there we go. So we can see that when I submitted that Uber information, it's actually given us the location of United States and it tells us how many people are in that company. Forgot to bold that bit. Um, but you can very easily see now how you can automate tasks with Zapier really easily um, and where you can use various different data sources and connect them up. I think the best way to uh, get to know Zapier is actually playing around with it. So if I was you, I would just install it. It's completely free to use. There are some premium features such as uh, Facebook leads, which you have to pay for, but you can do a lot for free. So everything we just did with Zapier is on the free account. Um, so yeah, have a play around and see what you can do. Um, if you find anything interesting um, or have any questions, put it in the comment section below. 
and that's all that's it for this video um again if you have any questions in the comment section below and we'll see you next time thank you very much uh -huh.